right, pretty much gonna pick off from pick up from uh, Tuesday. All right, so keep in mind, right, at the time of the recording, which was right, which is obviously we right, were talking about the essentially the essential mitigation that happened right after market open, which we had discussed the POIs that then came to take out liquidity, came to take out liquidity again, right? And I believe we were around here, uh, right around the call, right? And so, right, in terms of a continuation, right, you see efficient, 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 right? Inefficient came back to take liquidity here. This took liquidity, gave an instant reaction. And I believe that's an M5 POI. Yeah, M5 POI, that came right into price and drove price to actually take out the liquidity that we were talking about. Right, which is equal, equal highs one, two, and then obviously this three, right? Because this did not take out anything up here. So one, two, three highs. Right, that was taken out, right? The thing is, is I cannot assume, I cannot assume up here until we break structure, but because of how structure was in terms of this entire range here, right? Because we had a mitigation here and because we had a mitigation here, I can assume that we could at least take liquidity out but anything after that is completely random i cannot judge that you know um and as you can see right immediately after we took liquidity we got a liquidity grab low high retracement uh and willingness unwillingness of so no man's land right until we then came to take out liquidity and drove price lower right so the thing is this has not provided a decent pullback yet outside of here Right, which is the uh, news move, I believe. Right, which is NFP. Right, and this is the first time we actually saw anything, any type of decent retracement. Right, even it's even though it's a little sloppy, you can see it here inefficiency. Right, inefficiency point of validation at the high, uh, but if we go over. You know, it's not even just disregarding this for now. I'm more so care for what it did. So what this did, right? This last mitigation here led us to break full structure. But this is more than just a typical structure break, right? Because we had originally pointed out, right, that we were reacting from the fulfillment of an inefficiency, and that you know generated. An internal structure break here and you know a major intraday swing uh, structure break a pullback and then obviously the liquidity grab so this is more than a break of structure this is also a daily disruption right because if I'm looking at order flow here right if I'm looking at a final push up I believe this is new this is the new day open oh no never mind this is just another candle here All right and if you look deep into the candle you see another wick that mitigates so naturally this wick would be a point of interest, and that is what was mitigated, as you can see based on the wick. Reaction, um, failure to continue higher, which generates <clears throat> a overall disruption in terms of our swing direction, right? So now, best case scenario, right? As soon as we start bottoming, bottoming out, we can finally see some type of premium. Right, wherever it is that we, uh, if this wants to continue lower, and then let's say this continues lower, and we have a point of interest here, right? Then that would be perfect, right? We could do something like that because there is potential inefficiency down here. Um, but this inefficiency is not anything crucial to me. If anything, if I see that reaction and we see that, you know, those bullish signs, and that's more so my pullback initiation, uh, and that's super interesting to see. Right, very interesting on EU too. I know you guys caught a lot of you caught EU, uh, especially on Friday. Right, 
right, this session on Friday, right? Even late session on Thursday gave you a decent opportunity. But here's the key thing to notice, right? Structure breaks <coughs> immediately after a large amount of liquidity was taken, right? This then broke the overall leg, right? As you can see for Friday's move. All right, so generating a overall liquidity grab, and you pretty much just catch the continuation. All right, pretty much what Raj is showing you here. All right, this is the last time that price took out any significant lows. Right, so this is not a, a overall BOS, this is a continuation BOS, low, high, retracement, high. Right, and then we broke internal structures again, and as you can see, we came to fill a perfect inefficiency right before NFP. Right, super interesting, super straightforward. Right, I know a lot of you guys caught this move that five minute inefficiency. Oh, that's nice, yeah, yeah. So, you see, so you see, the, the most important part here though is the fact that this broke because this generates a bullish narrative. Why? Because if you're focusing on overall picture, we are bullish, All right? We are bullish. So the first time we see a, a introductory break of structure, that is our pullback initiation, right? Our pullback initiation gives us right a sign of potentially downside but here's also things to notice for one right low momentum right high volume low movement right disproportionate and this inevitably came to take out liquidity who knows if it mitigated or something no it didn't reach that far it's so just mitigated um i mean liquidity grab which was also dictated All right so you can see mitigation one liquidity grab the liquidity grab was then mitigated All right so we have pretty much the bottoming out, the first mitigation, second mitigation, strong bullish order flow. And this, right, generates a overall break of the final leg to the downside, which generates a bullish narrative, right? <clears throat> and it's just super important to note this London move. And then as you can see, potential inefficiency there. Right, five minute SE technically, right? But more importantly, there is a, like he said, there is an M5 inefficiency there. It's super clean, right? Was there an internal break here too? Oh, that's just, yeah, this is nice. Yeah, very nice. Right, there's your re-entry. Four minute, three pip. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Right, what'd you guys think of uh who's watched the pair break not the pair breakdown, the case study from yesterday? Has anybody seen that? What'd you think about that? What do you guys think about the video? <clears throat> yeah. 
You didn't watch it yet? Cool. Cool, cool. That's not, that's not bad. But it's the thing is that, that you have to realize is that the hedge, that type of hedge only works in in terms of news events. Right? The only reason why they're negatively correlated was because dollar um dollar momentum or dollar volume was injected. Right? So that's the only way I'm able to do that. Because if I'm trying to do that without news, then it's like trying to say that AUD USD, Euro USD, GBP USD all move the same you know that's like that's what you're saying if that's what you're trying to do on a regular basis but because there is a news catalyst it gave me a an opportunity so i think it, i think that was super interesting like the thing is is that hedge i could have just hedged gu you know i could have just done that right there would have been nothing wrong with that um, so I don't know. I kind of just made it hard on myself too for no reason, but it is what it is. I just think that's super interesting to note. And that kind of introduces you to the whole hedging aspect of um, just assets in general, not just singular trading. Oh, really? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, where exactly? You're talking about here? Are you talking about the entry? Yeah, honestly, I love the I love the thirty second. CC. All right, this is what we covered in the video. I haven't deleted the drawings. Um, as you can see, internal disruption, break of structure. I mean, continuation break of structure, mitigation, mitigation, mitigation. All right strong bullish order flow even though it is one two three four mitigations even though it's four mitigations we are creating new highs each time <coughs> excuse me when you put be i would probably put be here Because, like, for example, if if by any chance, you know, like, I get a... Let's actually load up another chart just so I don't... Ah, it doesn't matter. I could fuck these drawings up. Let's say, right, this leg is still intact, right? And we come in to mitigate, right? You see this happen a lot, right? You see come to mitigate, then you see this come to take liquidity, and then it comes to take liquidity again, and it's actually just mitigating the 50%. Right, so I don't want to move my stop loss too early because maybe let's say spread puts my entry up here, then I'm break even, but then it you know grabs liquidity and then goes. Right, I know. Have you guys seen that before? Right, where we have a pretty much a POI internal disruption, then a liquidity grab to then give the move. I see that happen a lot. And the thing is, if the if the trade is correct, the trade is correct. Like my stop loss can stay here. Turtle soup, I don't know what that is. I used to call that a double liquidation back in the day. So news was, news is right here. Yeah, so pretty much over time, I've just realized that I'd rather have the entire leg be taken out before I move break even. Right? And naturally, if this, you know, is the move up, then my stop loss could even be trailed here. Why? This is already mitigated 50%, but this wasn't mitigated 50%, so there's always the possibility. That's interesting. It's a different way of looking at liquidity. <coughs> So uh, I do have a question. So this, so some of the admins brought this up to me first, like a couple weeks ago. 
um, and then one of the members um, actually messaged me about this and he asked me if I could add a crypto chat where you guys can solely talk about crypto and I could put that right below the community I could literally copy the community chat and just make it a crypto chat if that makes sense I don't know if you guys would like that I don't want to make too many chats though because then it's just going to be super split up. Keep in mind there isn't that many people in the group that are active. Like I don't ever really see people talk about stocks so it's like I wouldn't, you know, I think trading, uh, the community chat could be just strictly currency and then you have the crypto chat as well. I don't see much talk about stocks but, you know, maybe down the line. So yeah, I could do that today. I'll probably add that after the call. Also, um, I am gonna start one-on-ones probably next week. I've just been waiting because I wanna get through this last final that I gotta take care of. I gotta take care of it on Monday. And after that final, I'm pretty much chilling for the next three months. But yeah, I mean, other than that, I don't have much to talk about today. <clears throat> Unless you guys have a, uh, a topic. But yeah, I am going to add the, uh, the, can you see entries? you no not really this is something to note though Yeah, definitely lots of study material, definitely. <clears throat> yeah, nowhere near as clean as GU. Um, UCAD was also pretty. Bro, why do you always want to see EG, man? Why do you always want to see EG? This is so ugly. Look at this. This is super ugly. Is wrong one, yeah, wrong one. Look at this. I don't know why you still want to keep looking at this. I'm good on this. I don't, I'm not, yeah. You see, pullback, low, high, pullback, uh, didn't even take out highs. Well, it did take out highs, liquidity grab, uh, potential mitigation, internal break of structure, pullback, right? But this is super sloppy not moving so nice in my opinion i don't know why i mean there was a good opportunity there that was at 6 a.m yeah not necessarily no man's land this is just not the type of structure that i want to play this is not no man's land this is no man's land this and this is not no man's land there's definitely opportunity here 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 and here it's just not you know something i want to trade you know So yeah, I'm not even touching this. I'm good. Like this is sloppy. This is messy. Is it tradable? Yes. Could I trade it? Probably, but I'm good. I'm good. Right. I more. I'd rather take this type of setup than try to force something here. All right. Bunch of wicks. Super messy. This looks bullish though. This should take out liquidity.
<clears throat> yeah, but other than that, I don't got much for today, honestly. CHF, no, I'm not even going to open that chart if I'm being honest. <laughs> Anything CHF, I'm good. <clears throat> uh, where is it? What's your question? I mean, it just depends on your pair. Also, the thing is, is if you notice, right, a lot of moves in uh, in Q1, even <clears throat> even kind of Q3, Q4 last year, a lot of moves did happen during New York. And as you can see now, we're getting a bunch of moves, right? Even though this was in New York, uh, New York. I mean, no, not New York. This happened uh, during Asia session, right? So it really just depends on the pair. And the thing is that it can always change. Right? So if you want to be um, strict and only trade certain times, then you'd probably stick to being an intraday trader. If you're wanting to catch swings and you know how to find good POIs, then that means you'd just be overall trading less, but um, you'd be you'd have to be flexible with when you can be on the charts, if that makes sense. Because um, you can catch some really nice swings in in Asia session if the if the if the structure is right if the timing is right, you can get a lot of good moves in in Asia session. So it really just depends. There's a lot of factors there. There's your type of trader that you are. There is, uh, you know, the pair behaviors, pairs timing, right? Pair timings can change over time, which is kind of more so why I've transitioned over to models, right? I only trade certain uh, certain scenarios at certain times just to keep me off the charts all day. And uh, I also have like a life to live, you know, so... yep yep so yeah so it also depends on your criteria that's what you're pretty much saying it depends on your criteria your criteria could be either um you could just take it off pois or you could wait for the reaction it's up to you right um <clears throat> reaction is also subjective just because you look for a reaction doesn't mean that you're um that you're going into m1 m2 and 3 right for example a good example is what Raj posted. Let me see. Right, so you see what Raj posted? Right, liquidity grab, and then he took an M30 POI. That's 100% okay. Because sometimes you might like to see this candle sequence Right, and so it's fine for him to take. Let me show you. All right, if you don't really want to get on M1, you don't need to. Right, and then this is where you can get creative. Right, this is the seven pip, six and a half pip stop. Right, six and a half pips stop, right? But if you can consistently get these winners, right, then why do you have to make it 1% risk, you know? Like there's, you can get creative with it. You can, um, for example, you can wait for M1, M2, M3 entries, 
and you can get you know uh, a solid one to 30 right but if you're more consistent catching a one to 16 then why not just increase your risk because if you're trading a one to 16 in this type of format then you're obviously um, very consistent hit rate rise yeah but that's that's new york that's that's my trading session that's seven uh like right uh, that's overlap i'm sorry that's overlap the thing is is you just gotta see it you see what i'm saying so it's it's so subjective to you that's why it's also really hard for me to to explain a model to not even explain a model to you but to show you how to make a model it's it's super challenging because you can be so you know creative with it right this is a dope model you could you could trade inefficiency fills on m30 m45 h1 right and because you're focusing on bigger picture right <clears throat> you're couching still super like decent rr which is obviously here's a one to 16 right but that's 100 pips Right, let's say you're trading one, three, five lots. Right, one lot, that's $1,000. Three lots is $3,000. Right, obviously it depends on how you scale out as well. Right, because that's why I more so want you to win. I don't care what type, what type of RR you get. Right, this is a side job thing. Well, not a side job, this is a side hustle thing. Right. If you want to make it full time, then, you know, that's on you. But this is meant to be a side hustle thing. Right. But then that goes deeper into like other conversations, right? Like, for example, if you do make this full time, you're you're going to get that complacency stage. Uh, you're going to get that that phase where you really don't know what to do anymore. Right, I've seen a lot of people go through that. A lot of people try to talk to me about that. Um, and that's more of a psychology thing, but you know, you'll see more issues if you make it a full-time thing. Right, doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you can't do it or shouldn't do it, I'm just saying, you know. Cool, so any more questions? <laughs> yeah, dope, so probably start one-on-ones next week. Uh, we'll make the, is there anything else I'm missing? I do gotta make that solidified lows and high video. I'll make that when I have time. I'm just, I'm probably gonna wait to finish my final before I make it. Um, but yeah, pretty much from there. <clears throat> dope, dope. But yeah, make sure you guys watch that breakdown. I thought it was super interesting. Alright guys, um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's go ahead and end this recording.